Welcome to VRM Ecom guys, my name is John and in this Shopify dropshipping course I'll be showing you guys my exact strategy for making successful dropshipping stores in 2019. Now this is the exact same strategy I use to scale stores like the one you're seeing right here to over 20k per day in just two weeks. And as you can see, from the 25th over to the 15th, we scaled from zero to over $20,000 in under two weeks. Now I won't show you guys the exact details of this specific store just yet, but I'll show you guys another store of mine completely uncensored as I take you guys step by step into building a winning store. From product research to building the actual store and running successful ads. Okay, so let's get started. The store we'll be using as an example in today's course is MosquitoTrapX.com. It was a viral store that did over 500k in the first two months. I scaled very fast on this store and a lot of my competition started to take notice as I scaled to a peak of 30k per day. People were even posting about my site all over ecom groups on Facebook. Eventually tons of copycats showed up and I had to descale the store. It sucked having to scale down so quick, but in the end I was still very profitable and I think it's a great site to learn from. Now I grew my charge you guys thousands of dollars for the strategy I used to build this store, but I don't mind sharing with you guys because I have plenty of other stores running besides this one. Alright, so I'll break down the exact stats for Mosquito Trap X and then go over the 5 main steps that I took to go from 0 to 500k in just 2 months. So the stats breakdown looks like this. $570,000 in total revenue, $19,300 in returns, 18,230 units sold, each unit costed $9, including shipping, which is a total cost of goods of $164,000. We spent $312,000 in Facebook ad spend, uh, leaving us with a roughly estimated profit of $75,000 or 13% profit margins. So what were the steps that I took to make this into a profitable store? The five main steps are finding a great product, creating a beautiful professional looking website, writing copy that triggers an emotional buying response, creating an engaging ad, and using an effective Facebook ad strategy. Together these steps have brought me success over and over again in 2019. Now let's see them in action as we take a look at my store Mosquito Trap X. The first step to building a winning store is finding a winning product. Let's go over the four traits that you should look for when picking out your product. Trait number one, high profit margins. Look for products with high perceived value so you can price it three to five times more than it costs. To raise your margins even higher, look for products that people will buy multiple units of. For example, I knew that people will be interested in purchasing multiple mosquito traps because there's multiple areas you have to cover in your home. I even added this picture to get people to consider buying more than one unit. It explains to customers how multiple traps might help them. In the end, the average customer ended up ordering 1.7 traps, or roughly $66. And since Mosquito Trap X cost us $9 including shipping, our break-even ROAS was just 1.3, which meant that our break-even cost per purchase was $50. And this left me plenty of money to spend on ads. And nowadays, in my opinion, you want to sell higher value items with AOVs of $50 plus, and this is because Facebook ad costs are rising and smaller margins are harder to make profitable these days. That's probably why you don't see free plus shipping offers anymore. Their margins are just way too small to stay profitable as ads get more expensive. Okay, so trade number two. The second trait of a winning product is a big audience size. You want at least 50 million people who are going to be highly interested, but the more the better. Not only will the number of people who will potentially want your product be higher, but the cost of delivering your ads will actually decrease as you expand your targeting. Ultimately, a big audience size will let you remain profitable when you're scaling up high. For example, Mosquito Trap X is highly appealing to hundreds of millions of people. The audience isn't limited by any specific interest, and it's something that anyone in a mosquito-dense area would be interested in. The generic appeal means that the audience size will be huge for advertising, and I have an infinite amount of room to scale. Trait number three. Products should solve a problem. To be honest, every product you find will have this trait as long as you frame it the right way. Even products that most people wouldn't consider as problem solving. For example, fidget spinners were a super hot product that didn't solve any problems. They were just marketed to solve problems like fidgeting or boredom. With Mosquito Trap X, the problem is obvious. People hate mosquitoes. But whatever product you find, try to think about what kind of problem you'll market it for. This will also help you when it comes to estimating your audience size. Okay, finally, trait number four. The fourth trait of a winning product is a wow factor. Products should seem unique and unavailable anywhere else. People should think that the only way to get your product is at your store. This will cause people to impulse buy, regardless of whether or not your product is available somewhere else. For example, Mosquito Trap X is actually available on Amazon, but when people see the ad on Facebook, they think that it's a one-of-a-kind product. They purchase without price checking at all, and this is the kind of wow factor you're looking for. Now that you know the four traits of a winning product, let's talk about how I actually find these products to sell. 
the main way I find products is on Facebook. Not only do you get new ideas all the time, but seeing the same ad several times shows you that the product must be making money, otherwise people wouldn't be buying ads. Some metrics I look at on a Facebook ad is the number of views and how many comments slash shares it gets. If the video has over a million views and a thousand comments, most likely that product is a winning product. To find more products, I optimize my Facebook feed to show dropshipping ads by engaging with all the dropshipping ads I see. And if you do the same thing, Facebook will eventually start showing you tons of ads from other dropshipping stores. Once I find a product I like on Facebook, I check AliExpress to see if it's available. And that's exactly how I found Mosquito Trap X. It's important to note though that I don't use AliExpress for products that I end up scaling. I only use AliExpress for testing out products. This helps me avoid buying a lot of stock up front before I know something will sell. Once I run some ads and determine that a product will sell, I use a private supplier to source and ship the product for me. Not only is it cheaper, but the shipping times are way faster too. It's really important to find a supplier that you trust before scaling because you will eventually run into problems on AliExpress. Trust me and save yourself a headache, find a supplier before you scale. If you're having a hard time finding a private supplier, make a post in my Facebook group and I might be able to help you out. Now that you know what a winning product is and how I find them, let's talk about the second step, taking your winning product and creating a converting website. The biggest thing you want to focus on with your website is credibility. Not only should people feel like their money is safe, but they should feel like the product works and belongs to your brand. This means making sure your website doesn't feel like a dropshipping store from 2016. Since people have had bad experiences with dropshipping stores in the past, you immediately lose a lot of credibility by looking like one. To make your website look more trustworthy, use things like this secure checkout badge, which is different from the one most dropshippers are using. Include a 30 day money back guarantee so people trust what you're advertising. And make sure to customize your images and colors to have a coherent brand theme. For my store, my main color was blue, so I used blue elements in a lot of my images. This makes it feel like the trap was made by my store, adding to the trustworthiness of my brand. Lastly, include a lot of customer reviews and testimonials for social proof. Altogether, this should help give your site a feeling of credibility to the buyer. Once you have credibility established, you want to make sure that the images on your site are there to sell. Your images should clearly illustrate how the product works and how it will help buyers. Look at my main banner. In the background, a girl is sleeping peacefully, illustrating to people how this trap might help them sleep better at night by keeping mosquitoes away. My other images are there to illustrate how the trap works to really sell people on the functionality side. If you don't know how to edit images yourself, find a designer on Upwork. They have tons of talented designers from around the world that are really cheap. After your images are in place, go through the website yourself and optimize the user experience. Great user experience means the buyer can effortlessly navigate your website and find exactly what they're looking for. Ideally, you want buyers to be able to find your product and purchase without thinking too much. Notice on my site, I make everything very simple. There's essentially only two pages, a home page and a product page. When someone lands on my site, there's not much to read, and it's very easy to reach the product page. Once a customer is on the product page, there's a big easy to find add to cart button. Pictures explain everything so the customer doesn't have to really read, but if they want to, headlines summarize everything. My reviews are right where you'd expect them to be, and I even have a button to take people back to the top of the page. This makes it really easy for people to find the information they want and continue with their purchase. The last thing you can work on is site speed. Use site speed testing services and see what's slowing down your site. You're probably going to see images as a big chunk of your site's load time, so you should compress images using a Shopify app. I also use a theme called Turbo, which is one of the fastest loading themes I've found. It's pretty expensive, but I've found that it helps a lot with my conversion rates, especially when I'm targeting countries that don't have the best internet. If you're interested, I'll have the link in the description, but otherwise I think the default theme is not bad as long as you keep it clean. Altogether, this makes the user experience from landing on the homepage to finishing a purchase effortless for customers. Now the last part of a great website takes us to step 3, writing great copy. If you don't know what copy is, it's essentially any writing that helps sell a product. For example, all the writing you see on my homepage and product page is copy. The writing that you will see on my ad is also considered copy. When it comes to writing great copy, you want to target the customer's emotional reasons for buying the product. Do this by starting with an emotional hook before getting into any functionality. Ultimately, you want to maximize emotional response while still clearly explaining how the product works. Try to use congruent copy on both your website and your ads. For example, my ad is advertising a 60% off sale in the caption, so I also write it all over my website. I don't just set the price to half off. Now copywriting is an entirely different profession than dropshipping, so I'm not the best copywriter by any means, but if you guys want an example of copy that works, feel free to take a look at my website. Once you finish your copy and your site is done, move on to step 4, creating an engaging ad. The two most common types of ads are photo and video posts. Both are very effective when used in the right situations. In my experience, photo posts tend to do very well for apparel, while video ads will perform very well for gadgets and items that buyers are unfamiliar with. 
For today's course, we'll cover video ads because that's what I ran for Mosquito Trap X. First, let's take a look at the winning video ad for Mosquito Trap X while using this flowchart as reference. The flowchart shows how I like to break up video ads. As you can see, I start off with an emotional hook, also known as the attention getter. The main goal of the hook is to stop people from scrolling past the ad. For Mosquito Trap X, the hook was a clip of a person dumping mosquitoes out of a bucket. It took me a few tries to find this intro, but in the end it performed very well and it was worth taking the time to test multiple intros. The hook will have the biggest impact on your ad's performance, so make sure to test a few different ones out before giving up on an ad. Right after the hook, I'll try to throw in an animated clip that showcases exactly how the product works. You can find these clips on YouTube or AliExpress, but a lot of products might not have one available. If you can't find one, you can skip the animated clip and go right into introducing the product. It's crucial to educate buyers on how your device works, since most people will be unfamiliar with your product. After the animated clip, I like to show customers what the benefits of the product are. Displaying the benefit is really going to convince your potential audience to buy, so make sure you come up with some compelling angles. For Mosquito Trap X, the benefit is that you'll be relieved from mosquitoes because the device will catch them all. We highlight this benefit a bit by showcasing clips of the trap next to a bed, a mom and a son sitting peacefully with the device on, and some results of how many mosquitoes the device caught. After the benefits, I like to showcase all the features of the device. Let your buyers know what features makes your product a one-of-a-kind product. For Mosquito Trap X, the features were that it's safe for humans and pets, it uses USB charging so it can be plugged in anywhere, and it's super easy to clean. Just dump out the mosquito tank. Alright, finally after the benefits, I'll close the video off by displaying a discount to increase scarcity and increase the likelihood of a purchase. For Mosquito Trap X, I just said shop now, which is essentially the call to action. It lets the customer know that we're selling this product if they're interested. I have the 60% sale displayed as the main header, and usually use another element of scarcity such as limited time only or 24 hours left just to really drill it in their head that this is a one-time offer and they should pull the trigger now. Altogether, the ad looks like this. And that's my basic structure for video ads. To make one yourself, try to find clips from YouTube videos that fit the structure and make matching captions. Edit your clips together in whatever video maker you can use. I personally use Premiere Pro, but even a basic video editor should let you chop up clips and throw in captions with music. Once you have a video you're happy with, make a few variations by changing the introduction for each one. The first three seconds of a video are the most important because that's what stops people from scrolling. By changing the intro, you'll get a huge change in average watch time and click-through rate. So change it up a few times for your initial test. In this ad specifically, I tested out 10 intros before landing on this one. Once you have a few variations of your ad ready, test them in the last step, using an effective Facebook ad strategy. Before I share my ad strategy, I want you guys to keep in mind that there's more than one way to run ads. Everyone comes up with their own unique formula. This one happens to be mine, and it's what I found to work well for scaling high. Feel free to test different things for yourself and find out what works for you. Okay, let's break down the Facebook ad strategy. I start off with broad interest targeting, transition into lookalikes, and then go into what I like to call Facebook endgame, basically broad targeting, which is essentially just letting Facebook find your buyers. When you get to this endgame stage, you let Facebook do all the work as you sit back, crank up the budget, and watch the money flow in. Let's talk about how I get my Facebook ads to this endgame stage. I've made this little flowchart for you guys to help you guys follow along. So let's start off with phase one where I try to find broad interests that work. With Mosquito Trap X, I started with a CBO campaign optimizing for conversions that had a budget of $100. Then I added 5 ad sets with a minimum spend of $10 each. My rule for CBOs is to split 50% of the CBO's budget into a minimum ad spend for each ad set. The exact formula for calculating the minimum spend per ad set looks like this. This gives each ad set a fair chance before Facebook starts optimizing and allocating the remaining 50% of the budget to whichever ad set it thinks will do best. I start off with broad interest targeting like mosquito, insects, mosquito nets, etc. I chose them based on their large audience sizes of 10 mil plus each. For location, I targeted e-packet countries with a couple removed. I have the exact list posted on my Facebook group as well as this flowchart that I'm showing you guys right now. I also select English All for language because I want to make sure my audience could read the captions in my ad and the information on my website. Lastly, I selected all placements and let Facebook decide where to show my ad. I'll restrict placements once I know what's profitable. Now in each ad set, I'll test three creatives to start. Each one will have a different 3 second intro like we talked about earlier. So far that's 1 campaign, 5 ad sets, and 15 ads. Usually I'll let testing phase 1 run for 1 or 2 days depending on what the results look like. If it's hard to tell which ad set is the winner on day 1, I'll let it go for another day. 
A winning asset to me is an asset that is actually profitable. Not break even, but profitable. You can easily calculate whether or not an asset is profitable by looking at the ROAS and comparing it to your break even ROAS. Once I find the winning asset, I'll take a look through all the creatives to see which creative to run with. The metrics I use to determine a winning creative is the same as the ad set. It has to be profitable. If nothing is profitable after two days, I start over with new interests and new creatives. Once you have a winning ad set and creative, go into testing phase two. In this phase, I'll use the same format where I have one CBO with five ad sets and three creatives in each. But instead of different ad sets and ads, I'll have every ad set and ad be a duplicate of the winner I found from phase one. So you'll have something that looks like this. CBO campaign of $100, 5 duplicate ad sets using the winning interest from testing phase 1, and 3 duplicate ads all using the same creative. The reason I duplicate the same ad set and creative multiple times is because Facebook does a lot of random optimization for each one. Even though they're duplicates, Facebook will start each one with its own starting optimization. That's because Facebook takes large audiences and breaks them down into smaller ones. For example, if I feed Facebook an interest like mosquitoes with a huge audience size, Facebook will segment the audience into different groups based on the initial sample data it receives. If the initial sample data is not the best fit for your product, in most cases your ad set might perform poorly. This is why I dupe it multiple times, to ensure Facebook has a higher chance of segmenting into the right audience. Not only does it segment the audience based on the initial data it receives, but Facebook enters an auction at the ads level. When using auto bid, Facebook will do its best to try and guess the perfect bid to enter the auction, but a lot of times this bid might be too high or too low, leading to bad results. This is why you have multiple ads per ad set, to ensure that you have a higher chance of entering the perfect auction. Now I'll get into manual bids in a later video and how it compares to auto bid, but for this course I'll be covering only auto bid as I ran almost 90% of Mosquito Trap X completely on auto. The great thing about CBO is that with this method you're essentially not competing against yourself in the auction, because the budget is all controlled at the campaign level, so duped ad sets inside a CBO never compete with each other. Now, if this campaign performs well on day 1, I'll double the budget for day 2. However, if it does poorly on day 1, I'll let it run for one more day because optimization is still taking place, and the results might look drastically different once Facebook has optimized a bit. If it does poorly on the second day too, I'll kill the campaign and start over again. I'll continue to double the budget as long as the CBO remains profitable. After it spends a total of $200, I'll start to kill unprofitable ads. My general rule is to kill ads that have spent two times the target cost per purchase and have made zero sales. I'll also kill ads that have spent four times the target cost per purchase and is still below the target row as. I'll rinse and repeat testing phases 1 and testing phases 2 until I've spent collectively $500 on the entire ad account. At this point I'll leave any profitable ads on while also making lookalike audiences for view video 75% and also page view. I make these lookalikes first because these audiences are the ones with the most data initially. So I'll make view video 75% and page view lookalikes for 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5% worldwide. Now, we can transition into testing phase 3 with the lookalikes we've made. I like to make separate campaigns for each lookalike. So in one campaign I'll have view video 75%, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5%, and in another I might have page view 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5%. After letting these campaigns run for a day or two, I'll try to decide which audiences are profitable. This is essentially the same as testing phase 1, but this time with lookalike audiences instead of interests. I'll grab all these winning audiences and throw them into scaling phase 1. Basically, all you have to do to scale up is dupe all the winning lookalikes into a new CBO. If you only find one winning audience, then dupe it 5 times, but if you find 2 winning audiences, then I recommend you dupe it 2 times each. You don't always need 5 ads as per campaign, but I recommend you try to aim somewhat close to that number. Now, continue on with scaling phase 1 following the same rules. If it performs well, double the budget the next day. If the campaign spends greater than $500, start killing underperforming ads. Continue to rinse and repeat testing phases 1 through 3 and also scaling phases 1 until you've spent a total of at least $10,000 on the ad account. Now at this point your pixel might have enough data to recognize exactly who your audience is. This is where we try and test out my final endgame strategy, which is the broad no targeting method, where you literally let Facebook do everything. If you can successfully pull this off, you're basically done. You can sit back and become rich. So the setup is very, very simple. You might think it's so simple it might not work. But trust me, this is exactly what I do, and it works insanely well. I'll start the CBO off at $500 in this phase and use three ad sets. One ad set targeting USA, one ad set targeting Australia, Canada, UK, and New Zealand. Basically, all the English-speaking countries bundled up, and one ad set targeting the entire world, minus a few countries such as India, Indonesia, Malaysia, Egypt, where a lot of chargebacks occur, with language set to English all, just to ensure that the worldwide traffic is good quality because a lot of times worldwide traffic tends to be insanely cheap and super low quality. Make sure to set a min spend of $100 on each ad set so each one gets a fair shot before Facebook decides which ad set to allocate the remainder to. If the campaign breaks even on day one, then let it run for one more day. 
Sometimes on day two, you'll see a significant increase in sales, but sometimes they'll do terrible. If it does great on day two, then bump up the budget two times. But if it does bad, then just turn off the campaign and rinse and repeat testing phases one through three and scaling phases one until you've spent another $5,000. Then try out scaling phase two again. Eventually, scaling phase two will start to work and you'll be able to scale up massively. My current high spending CBO is spending 10K per day profitably and I'm still scaling it up as I'm making this video. All right, so that's it for my exact strategy. I hope you guys can make it to the end game. I've been using this strategy since CBO started working really well early 2019 and it's been working insanely well for me. Let me just show you guys a little bit of my ad account to show you guys that I'm literally not kidding when it comes to the end game strategy. This is exactly what I did to scale Mosquito Trap X to 30K per day. And as you can see inside this campaign, everything is broad targeting. Alright, so that just about wraps it all up for this course. I hope you guys learned a lot. Currently my partner and I, we're running 8 stores, so it does take quite a bit of time to manage these stores and also crank out YouTube content, so bear with me. I have some big plans for this channel. My goal is to get everyone to 6 figures a month completely free. I'm honestly tired of all these gurus out there who are pretending to live this lavish lifestyle off of e-commerce, when in reality the only reason they can afford it is because they're selling courses to you guys. So trust me when I say this, my partner and I have done over $20 million collectively, we do e-commerce full time, and I promise you the information I give out for free will be better than any course you buy. I just want you guys to know that you're being ripped off by most courses. I'm not saying all courses are bad, but currently the majority of courses you see out there on dropshipping, they're absolutely garbage in my opinion. Okay, enough with the ranting. If you guys have any questions about this course or want to leave some feedback, leave a comment down below and I'll do my best to get back to all of you. And don't forget to join our Facebook group. I have all the flow charts, excluded countries, and more information posted in the group. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video.